Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. February 22nd, 2021. 20 minutes to go to the cash close here on this Monday afternoon. The S&P is getting rocked. The NASDAQ getting hammered. But I gotta tell you, it's a marketplace. It's like a tale of two totally different markets. But hey, higher interest rates. They're starting to take their toll on the broader marketplace. We'll start this evening's video in, uh, well, very unlikely place, and that happens to be inside of the TNX, that's the 10-year Treasury Index. What you're looking at here, okay, is percentage terms. No, this is not the interest rate. The interest rate, though, is sitting somewhere around 1.37%. But this is something I was discussing on the weekend update that, you know, there's going to be an inflection point. When we hit that inflection point, it's almost going to feel like the marketplace just snapped you can feel it inside of the NASDAQ, but there's still more to come. I mean, the financials, as I said a moment ago, it's like a, it's like a tale of two totally different marketplaces. The financials, not only are they holding it together, they're still up 0.9% you know, on this trading session. Nevertheless, okay, as I said, where I wanted to start this evening's video, you got to recognize now the 10 year since the start of the year is roughly up 50%. Okay. No, no, that's not the interest rate, but it's up 50%. And when you start to talk about like the, you know, the 10 year exploding up 50%, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to feel the fear, okay, of rates exploding to the upside. The marketplace, okay, it feels it as well. In fact, when you start looking at the NASDAQ, I mean, the NASDAQ right now is starting to see some, uh, some fits of rage. It looks like we're actually about to uh, take another leg lower. And every single tick here is a, uh, is a tick into new lows right now. Again, the NASDAQ breaching the 2.6% uh, an intraday basis being led uh, by none other than Tesla. I mean, this bell can't go off fast enough right now because people, the sell side activity inside of the NASDAQ is literally bleeding over into the S&Ps. And as I was saying, again, it's the third time, you know, it's a tale of two totally different markets. Take a look at the advanced decline line, okay? You have sectors right now that are completely and totally unimpeded. But at the exact same time, and the reason I'm bringing up the advanced decline line here to the S&P 100 is simply this. Yeah, whatever, you know, the NASDAQ's getting hit a little bit, the Russell's down a little bit, you're kind of like, oh, whatever. Yeah, but the fact that we have a marketplace that is under pressure, and the S&Ps are down, you know, 24, which is, again, it's a big nothing, right? It's only 0.6% inside of the S&Ps. But I want you to realize, there's absolutely unequivocally no correlation in this marketplace, I mean, could you imagine this trading session? If there were 90 stocks effectively trading to the downside, the S&Ps would be down 100. They'd be down 150 easily, okay? Right now, you're just not seeing the effect of the NASDAQ sell side activity, okay? You're not seeing the effects of the NASDAQ being taken out in the S&Ps. And that's because the effects of what's going on in the NASDAQ, they're being completely masked. Okay, by the fact that the financials, they're holding it together at this point in time. And again, this is what exactly what I was saying on the weekend video is you have got to watch the financials like a hawk. Now, I know a lot of other people that are probably looking right now. They're like, oh, well, the energy sector. Listen, all of the energy sector combined. All right. It just it just pales in comparison to even what the financials okay, happen to be doing. As long as the financials hold it together, the S&Ps okay, are going to remain fairly resilient. They are going to hold it together. There is no surprise whatsoever that the S&Ps are going to trade right around this 3880 in the overnight trade. That's a level that we've seen time and again okay, recently. And this is a 30-day, one hour. Again, a 30-day, one hour. And we've actually printed in and around, okay, this level a considerable number of times. And I'm just pointing out, just in the last couple of trading sessions, some big reactionary lows in the marketplace right around that 3880 inside of the S&Ps. To see a little bit of a bounce there, okay, again, absolutely unequivocally no surprise whatsoever. You can see where my mouse is right now, right on the 3880. All right. Let's spin back around again to this idea that there's just this wild bifurcation in the marketplace because quite simply, there is. 
So the financials remain bid. For the time being, okay, the bonds selling off, and they do continue to sell off, seems to still be a positive for the financials. And again, we're continuing to look for the inflection point whereby the selling of bonds literally snaps the financials. Evidently, okay, the selling of bonds is having that impact, okay, in terms of some of the technology stocks. But again, there's a few, you know, odd sectors right now that remain relatively strong in the face of well, what's a fairly hideous marketplace right now, again, specific to the NASDAQ, which is down 2.5%. Those sectors, obviously, again, the financials, the energy sector. There's a few pockets of strength in stocks like Caterpillar, of which I actually put on a short position, specifically an in-out spread okay, to the downside. Again, it is a bearish position I actually put myself into today in Caterpillar. Again, this is just a violent move, if you will, to the upside. Looking down the list, some of the usual suspects over here, okay, you're not going to find too many other pockets of strength, all right? As we said, some of the financials, Caterpillar, and that was enough to actually keep the Dow bid along with the energy sector today. All right, spin this around. Now let's take a quick glance at volatility once again. So you have a bid under the VIX. You've got a bid, again, under the volatility futures, okay? With me to the bottom of the screen over here, short-term volatility is really starting to take off to the upside. Even though it's actually off some of the session highs, short-term volatility is actually up. This is a nine-day VIX by the tune of about 12%. Longer duration volatility is also bid along with some of the commodity products, okay? The big question here is we come into this cash close, right? What can we expect in the next few trading sessions over here. For that, I turn to the SPX. Inside of the SPX, one of the first things that I look to look at when people start talking about like, hey, you know, what do you what do you think for the next trading session? Well, first of all, the SPX, it's moved down today about $22, all right? There's about $74 of movement priced into this trading session, okay? Or I should say the entire trading week, that is the expected move. This is the upside of the expected move, it's the downside of the expected move, up or down approximately $74 on the week. So one of the first things you got to recognize is we've done nothing, okay, in the SPX, okay? To actually turn that on its side a little bit though, cruise over to the QQQ, bring up auto expected moves, okay? Inside of the QQQ, we've already tagged the downside edge of the expected move. However, okay, the marketplace, well, that really defines the market, the marketplace that really moves everything is, okay, without an equivocation in the SPX. So with a $74 move, okay, the bottom line is you haven't begun to actually see some of the volatility unfold. I would expect, again, a considerable amount more volatility to kind of unfold throughout the course of this week. Obviously, that is largely predicated on what you're seeing inside of the volatility futures, the fact that the, the uh, you know, NASDAQ is down by 2.5%. However, I don't necessarily believe that some of the volatility is going to come specifically from the NASDAQ. Okay, I do think we're actually going to see this week, people, the breaking point for these financials. Take a look again at auto expected move at the financials, okay? Their bid on today's trading session. If you take a look at the energy sector, the energy sector already crossed outside the upper edge of the expected move, okay? In large part, these sectors, okay, huge, overcooked turkeys. And as they start to actually roll over, it's actually going to roll the S&Ps along with it. Therefore, I would look, okay, towards very definitive levels. The lower edge of the expected move inside of the SPX is somewhere right around 38.32. That may seem fairly close, but again, it's 50, 50 SPX points away. Again, look for continued volatility. Also, look for opportunities, okay, of odd either sectors and or stocks that are bid in a marketplace that's seeing selling. In effect, what I'm saying is look for stuff like Caterpillar. Caterpillar is bid to the upside over here. If the rest of the marketplace is going to fall, it will eventually suck Caterpillar down with it. Hence why I'm actually taking bearish positions and will continue to look for those types of positions to fade these markets. Thanks everybody for joining us here at Theotrade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.